Good day. The state television company of Western Armenia represents all the most important events of these days. Today's broadcast, press release of the government of Western Armenia. On May 24, 2023, a conference was held to commemorate the 10th anniversary of the founding of the National Assembly of Western Armenia. Sons of Western Armenia, Dushman Vartan, issues of the Armenians of Western Armenia. It is senseless to take on the burden of responsibility without people's support. Samuel Babayan, Washington is ready to impose sanctions against Baku and Visa Bans Crisis Group report. Sub Sarkis Armenian Church of Sebastias Kamarak Province needs restoration. In connection with the recent events on the territory of Artsakh, the government of the Republic of Western Armenia reminds that Artsakh is an inseparable part of the state of Armenia, recognized in 1920, the successor of which is Western Armenia. Consequently, on the basis of its internationally recognized status, it is the state of Western Armenia, which has on its territory the legal legitimacy to make decisions on any matters. It should be recalled that the government of the Republic of Armenia, Eastern Armenia, has no legal legitimacy to decide the future of the indigenous Armenian people of Artsakh. Based on this, the recent statements on the status of Artsakh, the Eastern Republic of Armenia, are considered invalid on the part of Western Armenia. The occupation of the territory of Artsakh and the genocide of the indigenous people are the result of the indifference, distortion and denial of the rights of Western Armenians, who have suffered and continue to suffer from occupation and genocide. Continuing the work done by His Excellency Pogos Nubar, Western Armenia continues to work in accordance with the fundamental interest of the Armenian nation, representing its people with dignity within the mandate already entrusted to a significant part of the people of Artsakh, mainly the Armenian population of Shushi. The work of protecting the dignity of the Armenian people cannot be done without Western Armenia, whose rights have been infringed upon for too long and unjustly it will not waver from its fundamental rights in accordance with the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People. Spokesperson of the government of Western Armenia, Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Western Armenia, Lydia Margosyan. The full article is available on our website. On May 24, 2013, the National Council of Western Armenia, the Government of Western Armenia, the present delegates, decided to officially establish the National Assembly of Western Armenia, whose 10th anniversary was celebrated yesterday. The meeting of the National Assembly was held on the platform of Zoom, during which the President of Western Armenia, Armena Gabrahamian, Prime Minister Sedam Elikian, the President of the National Assembly, Nelly Harutinian, Vice President Violeta Hazarusian, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Lydia Markosian, the deputies made their opening speeches. President Abrahamian in his opening speech presented the challenges of Western Armenia, the current strategy, foreign and domestic policy, defense issue, and future actions. The President of the Republic of Western Armenia, Armenak Abrahamian, noted that any discussions and debate should have a positive result and the long and hard work should be carried out to get the desired result. President Armenak Abrahamian also presented the preliminary results of the sponsorship of of the candidates for the 2023 elections of the National Assembly of Western Armenia. The hero of the Artsakh War, Fidai Vartan, since 1988, fully devoted himself to the Artsakh movement, the People's Liberation Movement. Gaining recognition and respect among the people became a true legend. Vartan Stepanian was born on March 9, 1966 in Yerevan. In 1984, he volunteered for the Soviet Army in Afghanistan. He went to serve in Afghanistan voluntarily. I went to serve in Afghanistan voluntarily. I wanted to learn how to fight well, and I fought. I was not a bad soldier. I believe that one day I will become a soldier of the Armenian army. In peacetime, after Afghanistan, it was hard for Vartan to leave. I could not find a place. I worked at a factory for two months and lacked something important. I decided to go to Moscow and enroll in university. I entered a preparatory course, leaving my studies half away. Next year, in 1987, I entered the Moscow Engineering and Construction Institute. The life was going well, but in 1980, the Artsakh movement began. I left my studies halfway and rushed to Yerevan. After learning that an Afghan senior unit was being formed, I joined it. I was given a machine gun. It was very difficult for the conscripts in Artsakh. Vartan inspired the young soldiers. Then he took a handful of earth and ate it, demanding the rest of the guys to do the same. The idea was to tell the soldiers the following. Our country, our land, it's our mother. There is nothing sweeter in the world. Love her as you love your 
your father and mother because our land is the parent for all of us. In 1989, when there was a shortage of arms in Artsakh on a special assignment, Vartan went to Moscow, where from an unimaginable way, by passing the inspections of still existing Soviet Union, was able to deliver to Armenian weapons and ammunition, which were later sent to the village Bertazor of Shushi. With his friends Armen Yeritsyan, he created the Aspet military school, where Fidayi were trained to go to Artsakh. Later, Vartan creates a similar school in Artsakh. To take up arms and go to war, this is already a great heroism, and what kind of soldier will be, good or bad, depends on the commander. I really need the war. A bullet will not catch me. If I die, the reason will only be a mine. Vartan died on July 3, 1992, during a combat mission with military friends Yero and Araik near the village of Murishen in the entire Martuni region. If I die, come to my funeral armed and neatly dressed. Put a dagger under my head so that I can fight in the other world too. In contrast to the decades-long policy of cultural vandalism and destruction by the Azerbaijani authorities, Armenia and Artsakh are committed to the progress of the peace and solidarity through the preservation of culture and cultural heritage on their territories, regardless of their ethnic and religious background. The Gevhar Agai Mosque, which was significantly damaged during the Artsakh war and was in a dilapidated state, was restored in 2019 with funds from the IDA fund in cooperation with the authorities of Artsakh, the restoration of the Gevhar Agai Mosque in Shushi was carried out. During the existence of Artsakh, the Church of Saint Amena Perkic Ghazan Chetos in Shushi has been restored and improved. Ganzasar Monastery Complex, Vankasar Church of Martaker District, Amaras Monastery Complex, Tizernavank Church of the 4th century in Kashatakh region, and Dadivank Monastery Complex. The Artsakh Press Agency summarized the results of 10 days of political consultations with Samvel Babayan. According to Babayan, during the first meeting, the issue of the establishment of State Defense Committee was discussed. In principles, I have always been against such a structure because it would destroy 25 years of legal and political achievements of Artsakh. However, since the ruling authorities have already agreed to the demand of the entire political field of Artsakh to have such a management system, I have also decided to go along with it. The reason for that decision is exclusively to find joint solutions for overcoming the challenges that Artsakh faces. During the second meeting, Arai Karutsunyan discussed the possibility of holding a confidence referendum and asked for my opinion, assessing its internal and external risks and repercussions, and at the same time recognizing the need for my support on that issue, I decided once again to go along with it. To resolve the stalemate that had arisen, this version was also cancelled. I do not know whether because of internal or external disagreements. The third meeting, which should logically have discussed the last option, the resignation of the president has not taken place. Our position is unchanged. I go on having meetings and discussions with all strata of society, presenting the situation which has arisen and my views on the way out of it. The people must believe and accept the service we offer. Without broad popular support, taking on the burden of responsibility is not only impossible but pointless. I must feel the breath and energy of the people behind me every second. The government of Western Armenia welcomes any expression of will of the people of Artsakh to defend their decisions. From 1991 until today, Artsakh, in spite of great losses, managed to keep the state structures formed in accordance with international norms through free and fair elections. Today, Artsakh, by the law adopted by the National Assembly of Western Armenia, is considered to be a province of the RS with the right to have independent governing bodies, facing the loss of its independence. If the people decide to have any formalized structure capable of making the right political decisions, to appeal to the president and the government of the Western Armenia to join and become one of the leaders of this structure, we will gladly accept and go to the meeting, taking on the responsibilities entrusted to us. The International Crisis Group has released a new report on the new crisis situation in Artsakh, caused by the installation of a checkpoint on the road to Berzor by Azerbaijan. The report notes that there is a growing threat of violence in and around Artsakh. On April 23, Baku opened a checkpoint in the Berzor corridor, which is the only road connecting Armenia with Artsakh. The report particularly says the clashes between Azerbaijani and Armenian forces in May resulted in at least three deaths. The clashes occurred 
two and a half years after a six-week bloody war drove Armenia south of parts of Artsakh and the surrounding districts. According to a trilateral statement signed by Baku, Yerevan and Moscow, Armenian residents fled to Armenia or the part of Nagorno-Karabakh where Russian peacekeeping forces were deployed after the war. Since mid-December, Baku-backed activists have surrounded the Berzor corridor under the pretext of protesting against mining activities. Further, the Azerbaijani added more issues to the list of problems, such as the control of the corridor. Before Baku established the checkpoint, parallel diplomatic efforts led to two drafts of peace agreement between the neighbors, one proposed by Russia, the other developed by Azerbaijan and Armenia with the support of the European Union and the United States. Baku is unwilling to discuss the status of Artsakh residents in the negotiations with Yerevan, saying that residents will have the same security guarantees as all citizens of Azerbaijan. Since February 22, Russia has been unwilling or unable to prevent successive escalations, the blockade, and now Baku's creation of a checkpoint. What has been the international reaction? The U.S. and France criticized Baku for setting up the checkpoint. The U.S. said that the checkpoint undermines efforts to establish confidence in the peace process. The French foreign minister adopted the same line, warning that the checkpoint jeopardizes the negotiation process. Paris also called on Baku to take temporary measures established by the decision of the International Court of Justice in The Hague on February 22, which respond to the blockade. U.S. officials said that if relations worsen, Washington is prepared to take a tougher stance toward Baku, that bloodshed caused by the fighting will exceed the level the U.S. may impose sanctions and visa bans. Joseph Borrell, the EU High Representative for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy in Brussels, called Azerbaijani actions contradict the EU's call to reduce tensions. The 19th century Armenian church of Surpsarkis in the village of Chepni in the Ararak province of Sebastia has become a target for treasure hunters. This is reported in the Turkish language media. According to the source, treasure hunters periodically destroy the church by digging large holes and destroying the buildings. The roof of the church is covered with grass and earth, and the view from above resembles a home garden. The former head of the Chepni community, Murat Uchar, stressed that the church needs to be restored. It is assumed that the church was built around the first quarter of the 1800s. The Armenian church is called Surp Sarkis. In the conditions of the time, the structure was a place of worship. We have known about this structure since our childhood. Often the church was destroyed by treasurers. This place is a heritage which needs to be passed on the future generations. We want the structure to become a trademark of our neighborhood. We want to restore the church to give an impetus to the development of tourism. The construction of the church must be done in accordance with the construction norms of the Armenian architecture, as there are many cases when the facade of the church was changed under the veil of repairing the church, which is similar to the Balkan churches. Now the musical part, the Armenian folk song. <laughs> Shine and I.